Birds on the Hat Homestead. My name is Jeff. Today on a very cloudy, stormy day, we're going to get loaded. We're going to talk about loads on solar. So in order to, to come up with the right size battery bank, you need to know what loads you're going to be using throughout your day. So what we're going to do is we're going to use my system as, my, as your example. We're going to look at all the loads that I have, and we're going to look at how to measure those loads because some of those loads are 12 volts and some are 120 volts how do you measure that they're different voltage we're going to talk about that and then we're going to take all those all those measured loads and figure out what our total usage is for out of the day and then we're going to see what size battery bank we really need to cover the, these loads and then from there we'll see if we got the right size panels so you got to stay tuned because we're getting loaded. So let's all get loaded together. So now I am charging my phone. So we're at 62%, so we're charging my phone. And so my charging on the phone says it is running about three watts. So now we're looking at my computer. I have a desktop computer because, well, I just don't have a laptop. So anyhow, my desktop, this is where it just sits as idle, basically. Let me show you what happens when we turn on a video or click on a video. So this is one of my videos going in the deal. You can see how it spiked up a little bit. And then it kind of hovers right over, uh, somewhere above 50, basically. So this is the effects while a video is going on on my computer in watts. Now I'm going to stop that video. You can see where it drops down to about 35-ish. Now I'm going to go over to music and I'm going to crank on the same music that I did on the speakers. See how it spikes up again and then kind of settles a bit down. See, look up to about 56. It'll settle down right around 50 again. So that tells me that basically while I'm using my computer, my desktop computer, and I'm watching a video, one of your YouTube videos, if you will, that I'm probably going to be using about 50 watts per hour. Now, the music one, that one's actually dropping down of like 45-ish, 43-ish. So if I just assume 50, I'm going to probably be in good shape on my calculations for the total watts that are going to be used. Even though idle time is, or general viewing and stuff is like 35 watts, I think if I use 50 watts, that's probably going to be my best um, when I'm trying to figure out how many watts my computer uses. So we're going to go with 50 on my desktop computer. So this is 1.1 watts for my little speakers on my computer. Those guys right there. They're running just about 1.1, 1.2 watts. Now this is what I use as my monitor. I have this uh, Toshiba TV. I use this as my monitor for my computer. Now if you notice, it doesn't give the watts, but it tells you 0.8 amps at 120 volts. So let's just look at my kilowatt and see what it says. So when I have a couple programs open, but no video going, you're looking at 28.6 watts. 28.8, 0.5, 0.6, 0 0.5. So now let me turn on a video and let's see what it is. 
So now I'm running a video and there's really no change. Drop a couple decimals, but to me it's I'm gonna read that 28 point I'm gonna read that as 29. And this is with one of my videos going. So now this is an important fact here. It's running about just a shade under 12 watts. Yet I have nothing on, no video signal. So now we're going to look at my water pump to see how much watts it runs. Oh, it just kicked on. Let's take a look at the watts. Now we have to go upside down for this. You see with the glare there? So watch, 47. Just shut off and drop down to zero. So we know this water pump will run about 47 watts or so. It's not on all the time but it does kick on from time to time just to build up the pressure so we'll calculate that and the light bulbs that I use here in my barn where my computer is this is my desktop lamp that I converted from 120 to 12 volts and you can catch that in, the, in one of my videos as well I believe I'll put it I'll put it like up in that area over there but anyhow this is a 12 volt lamp that's running off of 7 watts so I either have this one on or I will have that one on and when that one is on that one there will be on because that switch covers both of those the switch does not cover the lamp so those are 7 watts so maximum I'm running is 21 watts but most of the time I'm just running two of them 14 watts so now when it comes to trying to measure the usage on an RV, there's no way I can use that kilowatt. So I was trying to figure out how is it that I can measure how much watts that that RV is using. So I got thinking, what about my inverter? The inverter will tell me what the output watts are. So I can sit there and play around with my, with my breakers, turn everything off except the RV, turn the RV off, etc. and play around with that stuff and that's exactly what I did. So I'm not going to show you every little step but basically what I ended up doing was turned off power to everything including the RV so that only the, the inverter was running and it showed less than 12 watts. We're going to call it 10. So 10 watts just to run the inverter. And then what we're going to do, what I did was then I turned on the RV nothing on in the RV but the power now goes to the RV and so just the 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 monitor for the um, the carbon monoxide and stuff like that's on the charge controller is now active but it, yet it's not um, doing anything and then a the pilot light for the refrigerator was on um, so there's an igniter for that and that's the only power that was on and I measured that in the watts and then I turned on each device separately and shut it off and turned it on you know the AC unit the the refrigerator on electric and 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 even the lights and stuff like that so go over each one of those uh, to show you what the results were um, but yeah it was kind of difficult to figure out the watts that the RV uses um, but I think I got enough information that 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 we could use so let's do that all right so in my RV I have replaced every light bulb with an LED light bulb. They run about 1.2 watts each, so and most of them are the duals like this. I can't use one or the other, I gotta use both. So together they should be about 2.4 watts or so, and when I look at my uh, inverter, it comes up about 2 to 3 watts, so that's pretty consistent there. So assume 3 watts for every light, and I don't have them on very long because I don't spend a lot of time in the RV. So I'm going to just assume 1 hour 
for three watts. So the refrigeration in the unit, the AC unit in the RV, that runs nearly 2,000 watts. Now what was interesting when I was turning this on to test it, the watts just kept climbing and climbing and climbing and finally capped off right around 2,000. So that's a lot of watts to be using to try to stay cool, but you got to consider that your summer usage that becomes your daily usage. So now my refrigerator, I can use as gas, propane, or electric. When I have it on auto, then it actually uses electric unless the battery is too low, then it will sense it that enough, not enough power is coming in and it will automatically switch it to gas. Or if the gas goes out, it will automatically switch it to electric. So right now it's on auto, so it's going to first grab it from the electric. So off of the solar, I'm going to be using right around 320 watts. That's not full time because that's just when the compressor is on to, to blow cool air throughout. So I'll probably just call it 10 hours. Or just to be conservative, we'll call it 12. So in conclusion, wow, a lot of stuff to consider. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys and and this little chart here kind of summarizes everything we covered in this video so that you know at least what my system is, how I figured up all these watts for each of those items and understand that 12 volts and 120 volts you measure them in watts and that's your common denominator if you will. And then you estimate your hours and you come up with your total use. So that's going to be your total watts. So my total watts used in one day, 6,570 estimated watts. So that's basically going to conclude this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 6,500 watts and in the next video, we're going to figure out what size battery bank we need to have to cover that 6500 watts as well as the solar panels so we're going to do sizing the batteries and solar panels in the next video so I guess you just got to stay tuned to, uh, to catch that one but measuring your loads was difficult didn't know exactly how to go about it until I actually got going and then it just kind of all fell together so hopefully this makes sense hopefully this helps you out this gives you a good idea of what I'm dealing with here on the homestead and, and how I'm structuring this life here off grid. So thank you for watching my video today and I appreciate you watching it all the way through there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Every little bit helps support my channel. My name is Jeff and you've been watching Arizona Hot Homestead.